Hello everyone, my name is Kelsey, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. This is going to be episode 3 of Climbing the Wall, and uh, as you can see here, we've got a paused version of my game here. Now some special stuff has happened, and we're about to get to that. I have a few uh, dwarves to name still, because I haven't named anyone yet for my restart. Uh, in the end of the last episode, the game did crash. It did actually crash, and uh, the save... The game didn't save, but thankfully, this time, the game did save. I've actually gone through a whole season, I think. Yeah, because it auto-saved. I think I went through a whole season. And uh, we've got a few things set up, okay? But before I get into that, I want to take a pop on over to some of the stuff I was seeing on the wiki in the Dwarf Fortress subreddit. Now, this is just kind of like a flow chart of what to do when you start out, which is, like, really useful and everything, and I'm not going to go into it, but... I am going to use this to a certain extent. I just, for any of you who are not dwarven enough to know, this is like the very basics of the game. And it takes an entire huge color-coded flowchart just to get through the basics. Um, and I definitely have not gone that far ever before. Just putting that out there. Now, over here, we've got uh, some pictures of a tile set. I believe this one is the Phobius tile set, and I have used these before, and I'll just make the image a little bit bigger so you can see. Uh, it's basically like a texture pack for the game, and uh, these ones that really make it shiny and nice looking, uh, I'm not too keen on using. You see here, like it really actually adds images, Not it, they're not characters anymore. Um, and these really do look good. The Phobius one here, this is like a look at the trees in the new update. They look a little dorky, they look a little weird. But, um, if you're a fan of these and you would like to see them, it might make the YouTube videos a little bit easier to watch. Um, I could go for them. They do look a little weird to me, though, and I kind of do like the character, um, way of, like, how Dwarf Fortress is set up right now. And over here, we've got a, a look at the Iron Hand, um, texture mod dealio, and that just got updated. And then another one got updated. It was, like, Phobius, Iron Hand, and something else. And then, uh, over here, this is, like not only a texture pack, this is like an engine. It was originally made for images of the game, but now it can actually run it at like a decent frame rate and stuff. And that's like the little selector icon. And it does look gorgeous, but um, I'm gonna be honest, I think it's gonna be easier to play without it. But it, ju it does just look amazing. And it totally gives you, you know, a completely different perspective on Dwarf Fortress, which would probably make it easier for a lot of people to play if you can't quite ra wrap your mind around how some structures look in the uh, top-down perspective. And then over here, we've got a little image at the uh, new version of Dwarf Therapist, which is not out yet from my understanding, but uh, I am just so glad they are porting it, and it looks like they're making some good progress. And then my last image is this. Um, Cayenne, you were saying that there is actually sponge men or something in adventure mode, I believe. I had no idea you were being serious. There's actually sponge med in the in the adventure mode, and that is terrifying that they can just, like, exist and kill you. Anyways, that's just a quick look at that. Thank you, Dwarf Fortress subreddit, for that. And uh, so for uh, Fortress, I did do a little bit of work on this um, off camera. We've got the refuse stockpile up here, obviously, a whole bunch of wood which is great. The trees really give you a lot of wood, so I, I still have a ton over here. Yeah, um, and then this is the uh, wagon that still hasn't been taken down completely because our general stockpile is still totally cluttered. And it looks like there's some miasma? No? Just some flies. Okay, anyways, that's why I like this tile set the way it looks right now because you can just so easily recognize that those are flies. Um, anyways, the game's paused, so I'm gonna go down a few tiles. And as you can see here, there's some empty space right in the beginning of the actual fortress. And uh, there's some slopes. And what I did is I uh, took Cayenne's advice and I channeled down some of this stuff. And I made a trade depot. And uh, Rith... Um, I, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I'm pretty sure there's like an English translation to his name. But anyways, um, Rith he over here made this uh, depot for trading... And it is three wide, the entrance, and it's sloped and everything, so it's kind of like, you know, like a uh, sloped sort of thing going down here. It's like a garage, kind of, for the, the depot. This is the meeting room. It's very basic right now, but hopefully I'll be able to get some stuffs in here. 
and uh, engrave the walls and stuff, make some statues. This is going to be the dinner room. It's going to have to be a lot bigger, not just this room, but I'm going to make like the kitchen and things like that in this one. And then down here is going to be the uh, bedrooms. This is just kind of like the hub. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of trailing bedrooms coming off from there. And if we go down a whole bunch of tiles, because again, thank you, Cayenne, for telling me that uh, the sound actually travels quite a ways down. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we get to the bedroom. So eight tiles or eight Z levels should be the perfect amount um, so as to not wake our dwarves. And what we've got being carved out right here is going to be the workshops. That's why it's so far away from the bedrooms. Because it's going to be loud, I, I assume it's going to be loud. And, um, so that's what's happening there. And it, I'm going to make it bigger, obviously. But, you know, the miners aren't super fast right now. But, um, yeah, I don't want to go too much deeper because I feel like there's going to be fun down there. And I don't want to have fun. Fun is not a good thing. Fun is terrible and not fun. But, uh, the biggest part of this episode will probably be the fact, if I can find them, dun dun da hold on. There we go. We have immigrants right here. We've got our first immigrant, Captain I uh, Agastatis. I don't know how to pronounce the way that I looks, but yes, we've got immigrants, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game so we can see how many we've got. One, two, uh, what's the H and the Y? Is that a yak and a, a horse? Two, four, uh, five, six, seven. I think I missed one. Eight, goat, uh, W, what is a W? That's... I don't even know. Okay. Sweet. So we've got a whole bunch of immigrants making their ways down to the meeting room because they think they can just jolly right into our freaking fortress. And, uh, yeah. It, whoa, that's a cool icon for that guy. Is he just old as shit? Is that why he looks like that? Okay, so we've got Avos. Shush. I don't even know. I'm just gonna rename these guys so I don't have to pronounce their terrible names. Damas. Mm-hmm. And, um... Reg... Was Reg originally? Oh, he's a child. No, he definitely was not here. Um, Lorben. I'm just assuming they're sex. I don't even know if they're a guy or a girl. Lorben Colder. Da, 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 da. I don't even know how to pronounce any of these names. But uh, hopefully some half-decent dwarves that are actually going to be... A gosling. Awesome. What's the D? Is that just a puppy? Okay, cool. Cool. And uh, the D is a dog over there. What's the Z? Dumb... Yeah, it's just two. Okay. Who's this? Vukar, a lie maker. Okay. But yeah, hopefully we have some half decent dwarves that aren't going to be complete leeches of, leeches of society. And uh, this is where dwarf therapist is actually really nice because you don't have to look through all of them and like assess their skill sets. You can just glance at dwarf therapist and basically see. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and down go down here to my pasture. What even is a W? Is it a. Oh, it's a water buffalo. Okay. Well, see, I would have made that B. You know, for Buffalo, but at the same time, there's something that's probably B that takes a bigger precedence over that or something. So I'm going to go ahead and add the new animals to the pasture. Okay, we've got a horse fowl. Fo fool? Fowl? It's not fowl, it's foal. Interesting nonetheless. Uh, a yak calf. Great. Enter. And then we've got a puppy, which doesn't need a pasture from my hopes, I honestly don't know. A gosling? Does a gosling need a pasture? Well, you're going anyway. Um, and a water buffalo again. Sweet. Is that a separate sex from my other water buffalo? Because if so, we're going to get some water buffalo babies. How does one go about looking? I guess I can just check them out once they have been taken to the pasture. But yes, everything is in half decent working order i definitely have a lot to do right now but um as it stands i made a lot more progress off camera than i have in the last two episodes so that's good got a whole bunch of idle dwarves now i should look at the descriptions of all these characters because they are so awesome and in-depth and everything but i will be honest um one I don't want to get attached to these guys. I really feel like this is going to be a not super long-lasting uh, fortress just because of the um, the uh, the status that the version is in right now. Obviously, the last two episodes have ended in tragedy. And uh, also, it's going to take a long time to go through all the descriptions, so I'm not going to do that for right now. But once the uh, builds start getting a little bit more stable, 
I will go through everything and, you know, describe the people I'm naming because I don't want it to just be like, you're a miner and you're a fisher, that is all. You're done. Alrighty, now staying true to the last episode, I named our primary miner after Shrootbuck, okay? Shrootbuck the miner has been doing us a lot of good, which is awesome. And uh, we've got our group nestled over here. Um, some guys are a little bit more useless than others, like we've got a whole bunch of dabbling people, like this Domus guy, tr Trampled Roughness. Domus Trampled Roughness, that's a creative name, I will be honest, but you're not too much use right now, so I don't know what I'm gonna have you do. You might just be hauling shit, I don't know. But, um, we have got quite a few useful guys. Alright, and, um, let's see here. So, Cayenne, again, he's the gem cutter, like last episode, and, uh, here's, he's actually gonna be proving some use today, so that's really good. He'll be making us some money. And, uh, Brandon... Mine grooves, Brandon, you're gonna be a good hammer dwarf, and uh, you're gonna be our lie maker, but you're a great hammer dwarf, so you could make hammers, I suppose. Uh, honestly, I don't know what all of these actually relate to, um, as far as, like, actually doing stuff, but as an accomplished judge of intent, and, um, let me see here. You you seem like you're really good at a lot of things, though. Uh, great lie maker, like I said, accomplished judge of intent, like... Couldn't you make for a good military dude, or at least maker of arms for the military? I mean, a judge of intent, obviously, like, is important in the military, I would think. Um, and Faisal Wield Howls, Mr. Faisal, and if it's not Faisal, if it's like Faisal, then tell me, because, look, I'm not the best with pronunciations, if you can't tell already. Uh, you're a good swordsdorf, which is awesome, but you're also a great miller. And I'm pretty sure milling is going to be very useful. Uh, you're a great counselor and an adept intimidator. So you're not the best at intimidating people, but, you know, you're not bad. And uh, so that should be very useful. But we do have an adequate fish cleaner guy and a really good butcher from the likes uh, of this guy. Great butcher. So that's really good. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to get our, like, food infrastructure down in this episode. And the dining area, again, is going to be right here, and I should probably make that a thing right now. I need to check the wiki a little bit. I almost missed the best one! Cobble Peasant Pants! You are our stone engra- not even stone engraver, you're just our stone mason. And you get it? Cobble? Stone mason? Is that not hilarious? You're goddamn right it is. Man, I almost forgot you. Jesus, best freaking joke of the episode, clearly. But, uh, yes, we do need to get the workshop started, so as soon as these minor guys are finished... Come on, Shroot Buck, you can do it. A fish cleaner cancels his shit because things are in inaccessible. Hold on, I want to check that really quick. He cancels it because the pen pasture large animal animal except... What? Why would you be cleaning near the pens? Oh! This was a really cool thing Kyan was telling me to do, is I should... I should... Uh, make the river my food s or my uh, water source that way and that's a zone isn't it I'm gonna go ahead and do this hopefully my dwarves won't like drown I'm pretty sure that's all you have to do right now okay oh if I hit enter and not shift that would probably help um, do I just have to do one tile on a river or sorry brook um, or could I do like three or something I'll just I'll just do like three and I want to resume the game I always do that I always pause it and then forget to resume it we got so many idlers. God, I hate idlers. Yes, yes, we have lots and lots of dwarves now. Lots of hands to carry shit around, which is great. Because we're about to move, like, more rocks than... I don't even know what. And we might as well just get started building things. So, B for build. And let's go ahead and make some work... Workshops. W, that's logical. First thing I'm gonna make is a stonemason. Or, yeah, a, mason, a mason's workshop. That way, I can start making some tables and things like that. And this probably isn't going to be spaced properly, but because I'm an unfortunate noob, I'm just going to place this here, okay? And we're going to build it out of whatever we have the most of. So, mecha, I guess, mica. And then, what I have been told to do from the wiki, and uh, I learned this quite a long time ago, you put a stockpile of... Not, not a zone. Did I... Did I oh, no, I did hit stockpile. Um... 
Well, for oh, let me think here. Oh, okay, we'll just we'll just press S for stone, and you actually do this. If that was it, bam, 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 and you make a nice stockpile right around him, so he can just grab his stones and go. Um, but I think for a, a, a stone mason, don't you like make a garbage dump and then put all of your stones in there? Maybe I'll just make it right next to him, and then I'll kind of like lose a little bit of efficiency. We'll try to do that. So a zone. Garbage dump, and uh, I think I mentioned this, but um, what a garbage dump does, yeah, how do I make you a garbage dump, damn it, okay, G, beautiful, uh, now what a garbage dump does is it allows you to place like a bajillion objects in one single tile, which is weird, and I don't really know why that's like a thing, but, you know, I'll take it, that makes it really easy to put the stones in the stone mason area, Alright, so I figured out how the dumping works, and uh, I'm just going to let Cobble go ahead and deal with the rocks the way they are right now, because I'm going to set up the gem cutter. Actually, I could just do that right now, couldn't I? Okay, so Cobble's going to go ahead and make us a whole bunch of freaking doors, not even dwarves, door, did dwarves and doors. It started raining, by the way. Um, let's see here, so we can set our uh, build building shit here. Construction suspended because of... I don't know why. Oh, it's probably because they can't get to it. Wait, are stones like... Are those actually blocking the way? You can get through stone, can't you? Yeah. What's your... What's your problem? Why, uh... What's going on here? Okay. Okay. So, cobble peasant pants... Cancels the pen... What? Cobble peasant pants sto stone worker cancels construct building item blocking site. Yeah, okay. Um, is I mean you couldn't have run out of rocks. We have like more rocks than what's imaginable. What is going on here? Why are there freaking flies in my fortress? Turnip plants are those like rotting? Are the turnips rotting? That would be really weird if that was the case. Flies. Get your ass out of my fortress, and why isn't this dead raven, why isn't this dead raven, this stupid raven, in the refuse pile? God, freaking slouches, man. I like how they don't actually use the stairs whatsoever, though, they just go down the ramp. I don't know if that's good or bad, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Kind of weird, though. Alright, well, at the very least, I, I, I don't even know what's what's the problem. Why can't this thing get... It's just a workshop. You guys can build a workshop. Anyways, I'm going to try and build... And this probably won't work either, but... Let's go with a gems cutter, a gem cuttery, a gem cutter koodle. Where is the gem cutter? Jeweler's workshop. I was looking at the wrong wording. Okay, so if that's the dump, let's go bam, bam. And he's already got gems to work with right there. Yes, Micah. Let's just go with Micah. Sure. And then we'll make a gem stockpile right here. And that will hopefully do the trick. Bam. All right. Cayenne, you better be working your ass off making us all the gems you can imagine. And those gems better not block the damn way to the freaking thing. I don't get why that thing isn't able to be built. Do we need someone to build that that we don't have? What's what's the actual issue right now? I need to get that kitchen started up, and I need Mr. Cobble to actually make us some damn furniture. What's going on there? Oh, it's so pretty, though. Aren't the gems pretty? God, I love bright colors. I'm like a, I'm like a moth to bright colors or something. I don't even know. What are they doing in the pen? Are they trying to move an animal that doesn't want to go in the pen? Oh. Hmm. This is just a theory, but that pen could just be not big enough for all those animals, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make another pen, and I'm going to make it right here, and it's going to go like that, and then I'm going to put my two water buffalo, are those, I, I forgot to check, are the water buffaloes, um, can I view you, a large mammali mammali mammalian herbivore? It is powerfully built, of course, because it's a buffalo. His skin is dark. Okay, do we have a girl buffalo? Please, please, God. Where's our girl buffalo? There you are. There you are. Please be a... Yeah, it's a cow. So it's a girl. We can have water buffalo babies. Hell yeah. All right. 
fan goddamn tastic. You know what? They get their own goddamn pen because guess what? They gonna get sexy times on the pen. Oh man, I must sound like the biggest creeper in the world, but that is okay because I'm about to have water buffalo sexy times and that's the best kind of sexy time you can possibly have. And then, does that mean I have to go take them off of this pen list? Because that means they're on two pen lists and they'll explode? No, okay, it automatically takes them off. That's fantastic. Um, now that should... I think that'll give the other animals enough room, because I'm sure the water buffaloes are like big-ass things. And they together, baby. Oh, yeah. Look at that. They're right next to each other now. We're gonna zoom in on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, you two are gonna get real friendly. 